stop. A lot of people just don't know the facts about how much like reliant on things that are not renewable resources we are and they don't understand the frighteningness of 70% of the food we grow in America isn't even edible by humans. It goes right back into creating ethanols, creating like fake sugars and corn syrups. I think the issues at hand are relevant to everyone. I don't think that anyone could say that they didn't care about the earth, that they didn't care about the survival of humankind or the well-being of their family or their children if they decide to have any. I think, I think that it's relevant to everyone and that um, issues of sustainable development are saying um, that people aren't selfish beings. The Sustainable Development Program at Appalachian State University is an 18-year-old running program designed to explore sustainable development concepts along with creating environmental awareness. Environment, economics, and social equity are the main focus of the SD program. I think the biggest problem that I run into um, just with students or um, just in line at the grocery store at Earth Fair is just people saying, well, I buy organic and local and I ride a bike to school, so good job, Michelle, you know, and just pat themselves on the back and really um, don't look at the deeper issues of like, we're not just consumers, you know, we're activists. And I think that that's really important to bring up that it's all well and good that you buy organic and you buy local, but being sustainable is much more than just a label that you can get because of what you buy, it's what you do, it's what you are. In 2001, the SD program began using a farm in Valley Cruces for courses, research, and community activities. The farm is used to educate students in agroecology, agroforestry, and sustainable farming practices. We're becoming reliant on chemicals, fertilizers, and pesticides. To, uh, just to grow our crops and once the nutrients in the soils are gone there is no replenishing them you know it takes so long for those nutrients to come back on their own sustainable agriculture is really important in today's world just because we are running out of the nutrients in the soil that we need to grow our food and once we become completely reliable on those chemicals there's going to be no escaping that I guess protection of the environment uh, preventative measures to stop the constant pollution we've been Pumping into the atmosphere, instead of justifying, justifying pollution, you have to actually do something about it. The SD Farm creates a hands-on experience that teaches students multiple aspects of sustainable development. We had some chicks hatch a few weeks back, and uh, they're actually starting to look like chickens now. And uh, we uh, moved them from the, uh, we moved them from inside to outside. Uh, I think it was about two weeks ago. And we also have a pig there who was just inseminated recently, I believe and we have two small hogs as well. Uh, we have a greenhouse, a uh, couple beds, uh, a few compost piles. At the farm, composting is an important part of everyday life. Here's our compost, our one compost behind us, and then we have the human manure compost, which is kind of gross, so I'm not gonna get into that. But this, <laughs> yeah, this compost is just I mean, I think the basis, of, I think this one sits for three years before it gets turned. It pretty much just creates like this reorganic material that we can then put back on the top of our soils just to give us like an extra organic layer. The farm teaches students effective ways to produce a continuous cycle of crops without harming the environment. Just knowing the best way to set things up without just throwing things down and making it how you want to be. Brooke is one of the farm managers. She's responsible for the everyday farm duties. I know that our big thing around here is she likes planting in cycles. She'll do like a rooting cycle and then like a top cycle. And I mean, she'll just plant a plant, say you have a really deep rooted plant that pulls up all the nutrients from like really low. The next cycle after that, you'd want like a cover crop that at the end of that, you wouldn't harvest any of that. You just chop, chop it down and lay it and let it die over the winter. That's kind of what we're doing right now. Over the spring, we've had all of our leafy vegetables, all of our beets and our turnips and our carrots, really deep rooted uh, potatoes. And now we're tearing all of them out and we're just planting like rye and wheats and clovers over it. And then what they'll do is through the winter, they'll grow up, we'll cut them down and we'll just lay them there. We won't remove any of it. We'll just come and slash it. And as that decomposes, it'll put the nutrients back into the soil that the deep rooted ones may have really soaked up a lot of. Well, we planted garlic today. Um, we started off, we threw down some kiln-fired chicken manure, and after that we put down the clothes, 
and we put some hay over that to insulate it and some dirt on top of that to keep it down. Every week, students come to the farm and help with the maintenance of the farm. The ASU Farm encourages all members of the community to come out and help as well. Even if you cannot lend a helping hand at the SD Farm, there are other ways to support sustainable development and the protection of the environment. Some people find living sustainably also has personal advantages as well. I think um, one of the easiest things to do and most rewarding would be keeping a garden. Um, because you see the benefits of something, you see the fruit of your labor, you know, you see um, how your work is paid off. And I think that that's really important because you see the fruits of your labor, you know where your food is coming from, you start caring about the health of the soil and you wonder, well, I wonder who else, you know, what they do to doctor their soil or you know, start giving a compost pile to add to that garden. Um, and it's a really valuable thing when you can go to your neighbor and say, hey, I picked these apples out of my garden and I want to give them to you. It's, you know, or I, this is the first tomato. That's what I gave my uncle as a birthday present, it was the first tomato out of my garden. There are many ways to get involved and become informed on sustainable development. Get informed about if you're interested in sustainable agriculture and things like that. With such active young adults supporting sustainable development, one can only hope for a bright and prosperous future. Well, I hope it grows and I hope it comes on a larger, larger scale because industrial agriculture is just, whole, just doing horrible things to the environment. I just hope one day uh, larger, more funding and more people switch over to sustainable agriculture, cut back on pollution. But yeah, that, uh, you should have the right attitude. You have to realize that how things are going now aren't necessarily the most sustainable or clean or healthy. Our problems of like having a paper due in the morning or you know something like that see not that it's unimportant but that um, you know it's minimal in the bigger scheme of things. I my friend that works at Woodlands in it too. Someone told me you could buy many things just by picking guitar strings. I set out to bring it all back.